Most riders feel physics long before they understand it. You lean, the bike turns. You brake hard, the front dives. You goose the throttle mid-corner and maybe regret it. But behind every, whoa, that felt weird moment, is a law of physics trying to teach you something. And no, this isn't about becoming a rocket scientist. It's about decoding the forces that shape every ride so you stop riding against your bike and start riding with it. Because let me tell you, once you understand what your tires, suspension, and handlebars are actually doing, the bike stops feeling like a machine and starts feeling like an extension of you. So, if you ever wondered why your bike behaves the way it does, or why sometimes it doesn't, this one's for you. Let's break down the invisible forces that separate the amateurs from the riders who really know what the hell they're doing. Number 1. Gyroscopic precession is why your bike stays up. You ever wonder why a motorcycle doesn't flop over the second you let go of the handlebars? It's not magic. It's not balance either. Not in the way you think. It's a little thing called gyroscopic precession, and it's the unsung hero of your entire riding life. When your wheels spin, they become gyroscopes, and gyroscopes don't like to change direction. That spinning mass resists tilting, which is what helps the bike stay upright once you're moving. It's why a bike feels twitchy and unstable when you're crawling in traffic, but becomes rock solid at speed. More spin equals more stability. And here's the kicker. This force also helps initiate lean and turn. When you push on the bar, we'll get to counter steering in a second, you're actually applying torque to a spinning gyroscope. The response isn't immediate, it's perpendicular. You push left, the wheel reacts downward, the bike leans. It's not instinctual until you understand the physics behind it. A lot of new riders try to balance the bike with their bodies like it's a bicycle, but at 50 miles an hour, your muscles don't matter. The laws of physics are doing the heavy lifting, and once you realize that, your trust in the machine skyrocket. Number 2. Counter steering is real, and it's everything. Most new riders don't believe in counter steering at first. Push left to go left sounds like some kind of prank. But once you actually do it, once you push the bar left and feel the bike lean in and carve a corner, you realize this is the secret handshake of real motorcycling. Counter steering isn't some advanced technique, it's how bikes actually turn at speed. At anything above a walking pace, turning the handlebars in the opposite direction of where you want to go creates lean. Lean creates turning. It's counterintuitive, but it's also the reason you can weave through traffic or flick through a canyon road with precision. Riders who don't understand this end up manhandling the bars or leaning their bodies dramatically, thinking that's what makes the turn happen. It's not. It's the bar input. And here's the best part. Once you internalize it, counter steering becomes second nature. You stop thinking and just push. And the bike obeys. That's when riding starts to feel like flying. Until then, you're just fighting the bike with your torso and wondering why it won't listen. Number 3. Weight Transfer Controls Traction When you're riding, traction isn't some magic number stuck to your tires. It's dynamic and it moves with you. Every time you brake, accelerate, or lean, you're shifting weight around the bike. And where the weight goes, the grip follows. Grab a handful of front brake and you'll see the fork compress as the bike's mass dives forward. That's not just suspension doing its job, it's a physics lesson. More weight on the front tire means more grip there, but it also means the rear tire gets lighter, which is why you can lock it up or even lift it off the ground under hard braking. Same idea when you hit the throttle. The rear squats, front lifts, and your available grip shifts backwards. That's why you high side if you roll on too hard mid-corner. Your rear suddenly gets more grip and launches you like a catapult. Knowing how your weight moves lets you control traction instead of gambling with it. You can trail brake into a corner, settle the chassis, and get back on the gas without drama, or you can ride like a light switch and wonder why you keep sliding. Physics doesn't care. It just follows the rules. Number 4. Your tires have a limit and it's a shared one. Think of your tires like a credit card. You get a fixed spending limit for traction, and everything you do on the bike pulls from that same balance. Brake too hard while leaned over? Swipe declined. Try to accelerate mid-corner while trail braking? Overdraft. That's when crashes happen. 
Every tire has a contact patch, that little piece of rubber touching the road, and it only has so much grip to offer. If you're upright and braking, no problem. If you're leaned over and just holding throttle, also fine. But if you try to combine heavy braking and sharp cornering, you're asking too much. That's why bikes low side. The rider exceeded the available grip by doing too much at once. The pros understand this instinctively. They know how to smoothly release brake pressure before leaning deeper. They accelerate only when the bike starts standing up again. It's not magic, it's resource management. You're not just riding the bike, you're managing a physics budget, and if you overspend, the ground collects the debt. Mastering this concept is what separates beginners from real riders. Learn how much grip you're asking for at any moment, and stop asking for more than the tires can give. Number 5. Lean angle doesn't turn the bike, it balances the forces. A lot of riders think leaning is what makes a motorcycle turn, but that's not quite right. Leaning is your body's way of keeping the bike balanced while it's turning. The actual turn comes from counter-steering, remember? Push left to go left. The lean, that's just you making sure gravity and centrifugal force don't throw you off the road. When you're cornering, your bike wants to keep going straight, that's inertia. But you're asking it to bend its path, so physics pushes you outward. To stay balanced through that curve, you lean in. The faster or tighter the corner, the more you need to lean. It's a dance between speed, radius, and gravity. Here's the part beginners get wrong. They try to lean more to turn sharper. But if you're not adding counter-steer input, nothing changes. You can lean all you want, but the bike won't turn itself. Worse, if you're already at the edge of your tire and you lean more without adjusting speed or input, you'll run out of traction, and that's when the low-side gremlin comes to collect. So don't treat leaning like the steering wheel. It's not the turn, it's the balance. Number 6. Centripetal force is always trying to fling you wide. Ever feel like your bike wants to drift out of a corner? That's not your imagination, it's physics. When you take a turn, your momentum is pulling you in a straight line. The only thing dragging you around the curve is centripetal force, created by your tires gripping the road and redirecting your path. If that grip fails, you're sliding wide into the grass, or worse. This is why throttle control, tire condition, and body position matter so much. If you enter a corner too fast, that outward pull becomes too strong for your tires to hold and you'll find yourself drifting to the outside, sometimes called pushing wide. That's when panic kicks in, and riders either stand the bike up and brake mid-corner, bad idea, or freeze entirely, worse. Centripetal force also explains why cornering feels smoother when your suspension is dialed and your tires are warmed up. The more grip you get, the more force you can redirect without losing control. That's why pros focus so much on tire temp, line choice, and corner speed, because they know exactly how much force they can safely manage. Learn to respect this force, not fight it. Control your speed, choose your line, and you'll stay inside the curve, where you belong. Number 7. Speed equals stability, not safety. Here's one of the weirdest truths in motorcycle physics. Going faster actually makes the bike more stable. That's because of gyroscopic forces. When your wheels are spinning quickly, they resist changes in direction, kind of like a spinning top. That's why your bike feels more locked in at highway speeds than it does wobbling through a parking lot. But here's the trap. Stability isn't the same thing as safety. Just because your bike feels planted at 70 miles an hour doesn't mean you're safer than at 20. It just means the bike is resisting small changes more. If something does go wrong, like a car swerves into your lane or you misjudge a corner, you've got less time to react and way more momentum working against you. A lot of beginners misread this feeling. They think high speed equals control, but it's really just a temporary illusion. Yes, fast feels smooth, but smooth doesn't mean safe. True control comes from understanding how your inputs affect balance, traction, and physics, not from twisting the throttle and hoping the bike holds. So, enjoy the stability of speed, but don't confuse it with invincibility. The faster you go, the narrower your margin for error becomes. Number 8. 
Your suspension controls geometry. Most riders think of suspension as a comfort thing, softer for bumpy roads, stiffer for sport riding. But what a lot of people don't realize is that your suspension directly affects the shape and behavior of your motorcycle. When you hit the brakes, your front suspension compresses. That changes the rake and tail, basically the angle and length of your steering geometry. A steep rake and a short trail makes the bike turn quicker but feel twitchier. A relaxed rake and longer trail make it more stable but slower to turn. So, when the front dives under braking, your whole steering feel changes, often right before a corner. Not ideal if you're not ready for it. Same goes for the rear. If your rear shock is too soft, accelerating out of corners will make the back squat, lifting the front and making steering feel vague. Too stiff and it can skip or spin out under throttle. Suspension isn't just bounce control. It's handling control. If your bike ever feels unpredictable in corners, it's not always tire or technique. Sometimes, it's just physics disguised as suspension settings. Learn how your bike moves under load, and you'll stop fighting the bike and start dancing with it. Number 9. Drag and wind resistance grow exponentially. Here's a nasty little secret your speedometer won't tell you. Wind drag doesn't just increase with speed, it explodes. If you double your speed, the aerodynamic drag doesn't double, it quadruples. That's why it's relatively easy to go from 20 to 40 miles an hour, but going from 80 to 100 feels like your bike is riding into a brick wall made of air. Every time you accelerate, you're punching a hole through the atmosphere, and the faster you go, the thicker that hole gets. That's why you'll hear sport bike riders talking about tucking in like it's a sacred ritual. It's not just for style. Reducing your profile helps you cheat physics just enough to slip through the air instead of bulldozing it. This also explains why small bikes feel fine in town but run out of breath on highways. They're not weak, they're just outmatched by air resistance. A 300cc bike might have the horsepower to hit 100 miles an hour in a vacuum, but out in the real world, wind drag eats half that power alive. So next time you wonder why your bike's top speed feels capped, or why your MPG drops above 60, just remember, air doesn't play fair, and it always wins eventually. Number 10. Rolling resistance versus friction. Both matter. It's easy to lump all tire grip into one idea, traction, but there's a quiet battle going on under your wheels between rolling resistance and friction, and knowing the difference can change how you ride and even how your bike feels. Rolling resistance is the force that fights your bike just for moving forward. It comes from your tires flexing, the road surface, your tire pressure, and your wheel bearings. More resistance means more effort to keep rolling, which saps power and fuel economy. Under inflated tires, that's rolling resistance working overtime. Friction, on the other hand, is what keeps you upright. It's what allows your tires to grip in a corner, grab under brake, and bite during acceleration. You want just the right amount. Too little and you slide. Too much and the tire wears like a pencil eraser on gravel. Now, here's the tricky part. Sometimes increasing one decreases the other. Softer tires grip better but create more rolling resistance. Harder tires roll easier but can slip under stress. That's why racers tune pressure to the decimal and why your tire choice isn't just about brand or price. Physics is in every inch of rubber on the road. You just have to learn to feel it. Number 11. Chain tension changes your suspension behavior. Most riders think of the chain as just a power delivery device. Twist the throttle, chain spins, wheel moves. Simple. But on a motorcycle, the chain also plays a sneaky role in how your suspension behaves, especially under load. And if you don't understand that, your bike will feel like it has a mind of its own. On chain-driven bikes, acceleration tightens the top run of the chain. That tension pulls on the swing arm and can either compress or extend the rear suspension depending on how the sprocket and pivot point are aligned. This is called chain-induced squat or anti-squat, and it can completely change how your bike feels mid-corner or on rough pavement. Get on the gas hard, and the rear might stiffen up unexpectedly. Or the opposite, it might squat so much that your front end feels light and vague. 
You'll think it's a suspension issue, but really it's the chain geometry flexing the bike around like a puppet on strings. This is why chain slack matters, not just for wear and tear, but for ride quality. Too tight, you'll feel harsh bumps. Too loose, and you'll get vague, mushy throttle response. Your throttle hand isn't just for calling power. It's subtly tugging at your suspension settings. Know that, and you'll feel way more in control. Number 12. Torque versus Horsepower. Know the difference. Ask a new rider what kind of engine they want, and they'll probably say, high horsepower. But here's the thing. Most of them have no idea what horsepower actually does, and if you don't understand how torque and horsepower work together, your riding style and bike choice might end up fighting each other. Torque is the raw twisting force. It's what launches you off the line, gives you that punchy pull in lower RPMs, and makes a bike feel strong. It's why cruisers feel meaty and responsive at 3,000 RPM. Horsepower, on the other hand, is torque over time. It's what determines your top-end speed, how fast you can accelerate at higher revs, and how your bike feels when you're really pushing it. If your bike makes peak torque at 5,000 RPM but peak horsepower at 10,000 RPM, you'll feel two completely different personalities depending on how you ride. Lug the bike in high gear at low revs? That's torque. Rev it out and scream past 100 miles an hour? That's horsepower. Understanding this changes how you shift, how you approach corners, and how you choose your next bike. Want punchy city riding? Look for torque. Want screaming performance on open roads? Go for horsepower. Most riders ride wrong for the bike they bought and blame the machine instead of physics. Number 13. Momentum always wants to go straight. When you're carving a corner and your bike starts drifting wide, that's not your tires betraying you. It's momentum doing its job. In physics, momentum is a body's resistance to change in motion. And motorcycles, being heavy chunks of metal moving at speed, really hate change in direction. Every time you initiate a turn, you're not just steering, you're fighting your own momentum. That's why smooth inputs matter so much. If you jerk the bars or slam the brakes mid-corner, you're interrupting the delicate balance between grip and inertia. Do it wrong, and you'll either understeer into the weeds or overcorrect into a slide. Body position helps manage this too. By leaning in, you're adjusting the bike's center of gravity to assist with the turn instead of forcing it. Throttle control? Same thing. Rolling on gently stabilizes the chassis and eases the exit. Chop at mid-turn, and the sudden deceleration amplifies the bike's urge to stand up and shoot wide. Riders who don't understand momentum think corners are dangerous. Riders who do understand it make corners their playground. Physics isn't your enemy. It's your most powerful riding tool. But only if you stop pretending it's about feel and start riding like you know what's actually happening. Motorcycles aren't just machines. They're physics in motion. Every lean, every throttle twist, every brake squeeze is a negotiation with gravity, inertia, and momentum. The riders who last, who ride fast and stay safe, are the ones who stop guessing and start understanding. You don't need a physics degree to master a bike, but you do need to stop treating it like magic. Because once you truly get what your bike is doing underneath you, that's when riding stops being scary and starts being art. Let me ask you this, which of these physics principles caught you off guard? Or, better yet, which one saved your ass on the road? Let's hear your stories down below. See you in the next one, and keep the rubber side down.